We are live. That's correct. So <laughs> I like that you did that. Like that's a consistency. Yeah, guys. I'm just yeah. gonna, I think, start every session with a little thanks for an action. <laughs> awesome. Well, this one is an overview of WHM. And I always forget, Lauren, what is, <laughs> is it dub, is it web hosting manager? I think so. Web host yeah. manager. That's what I always tell people. So if it's wrong, you didn't hear from me. It might be wrong. Just because you, know, you probably it got that from good, me. Though. It sounds right. It so sounds WHM good. is, we'll say, theoretically web host manager. And it's a software that has been around since 2003. In fact, I started using cPanel around that time. And um, it's developed and it's gotten cleaner and nicer and its theme is better. Um, but essentially what we'll be looking at today is the server side of cPanel, which is WHM. WHM is the software that provides multi-tenant hosting for LAMP environments. And it's an environment that, or a server that you won't necessarily as a domain of one's own administrator need to be in very often, if at all. Right. When we did the overview, Lauren did a great job of talking about WordPress and focusing how you can switch into cPanels through WordPress and how you can use WHMCS to manage users and track users and touched upon WHM, which is, in fact, what you're paying for. That is the cPanel server. That said, um, a lot of what you need to do or could do in WHM can already be managed in WordPress or WHMCS. So keep that in mind. There is some useful things though that we can do in WHM. So let me take a moment here and show you that. Let's jump into WHM and see what's what. Ready? Yeah. Okay. So one thing is when you get into this um, service, when you get into this server, you'll see a few options. In fact, if you look to the left, don't look to the left, but if you look to the left, you'll see why we try and keep people out of it. That is me scrolling through all the options in WHM. It's ridiculous. There is so much. Um, and much of it you will never ever need to know about. But one that is useful we'll talk about right now is this list accounts. List accounts is probably the most useful um, space in WHM to get information about your server. So this is the state you server where Lauren set up her account um, in the first demonstration of all three systems. And so I'm actually gonna use that as a stepping point to find Lauren's account. So A, now list accounts, I can do a quick search and I can find an account I'm looking for. Here's Lauren's state you account. I know she has 148 megabytes, which translates to about a gig of uh, Quota, I know she's using now two megabytes, so she's very efficient. I know what package she's using, WordPress in a classroom. I know the theme. And I also know when she set it up, her email and her username, which is her cPanel username. All of this to say, this is a very useful bar of information about an account. It even has information like the IP address of your server and a quick handy dandy link that will take you, and Lauren already showed you this, but it will take you right into the cPanel account. So that's a quick jump right into Lauren's cPanel account and I can see everything that's going on there. But back to WHM. One of the things we often talk about when people are in WHM, and this does come up fairly often, is people either want to change the quota of an account, which you can do from here. They want to suspend an account, which you, usually can do from here. I'm not seeing it here right now. Oh yeah, here it is. You can suspend the account um, and you can talk about why. Lauren is spamming <laughs> all the users. And so bam, we could suspend that. She may need to change her contact email. That could be done here, change the password, etc. But most times we get domain of one's own admins calling us and saying, hey, look, this particular user is using video or doing archival work and they need more space. And so on a case by case basis, you can click on that change quota button and you can say, you know what, they're going to get five gigs, save it. 
And then that user, that specific user, not everyone in the system, but that specific user will get five gigs of the shared um, storage space versus the rest of the users. Um, the other thing I find very useful with the list account is that you can also modify the account according to specific things. One of the things we might get or folks here might get, we can go into this more detail later, is you may want to change the actual primary domain, right? I didn't like Lauren Hanks, for example. I wanted him to be <laughs> Jim Groom, for example, and I overwrite that, right? That's the history lesson. Um, but the idea there is that you can change primary domains. With that comes a certain amount of issues where you have to make sure the databases remain the same, um, the prefix, et cetera. But this is also a place where you could change primary domains for accounts. Um, with that comes some issues, so don't do that lightly. And if you have an issue, reach out to us on that. Um, but that's a basic overview of what the list account um, space offers a user, so. Yeah, and you know, Jim, when I hear you talk about changing quota for a single user, it does make me think about how you might change quota for an entire group of users, for example. So maybe yeah. you want to kind of frame cPanel for different cohorts of folks like students versus faculty or the beginner cPanel that users see that may be a bit more stripped down uh, versus the advanced cPanel that might have more features, more functions, you know, the advanced stuff in cPanel. Um, same thing with quota, you know, maybe your beginner users or the default cPanel that folks see at first glance, maybe that only has a gig of space, but then, you know, the heavy hitters, the folks that are really taking ownership of the, their cPanel account that need more space, maybe you want to, you know, have a five, five gig cPanel account for folks. Um, it, it sounds to me, Lauren, and I might be wrong, but it sounds to me like you're ready to show us something and yeah. I haven't covered it. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, I'm laying the foundation here. So it kind of <laughs> makes sense because I think it is worth talking about these scenarios before we jump into why we're showing you what we're showing you. Um, totally. I also think, you know, it becomes really easy. You know, you have this list accounts. Jim, Jim just showed you how you can easily go in and modify an account for a single user. But if you find that you're going in and modifying, you know, one on a one off basis, it might make so, more sense to just have predefined what we're calling cPanel packages or different versions of cPanel that you can then switch between. And you know that, OK, when someone is switched from the default beginner cPanel to an advanced cPanel, you know exactly what kind of settings they're getting. Uh, behind the scenes. And it kind of keeps things a little more unified and allows you to sort of track over time, you know, where your storage is going. Um, I've seen Domain of One's own instances that don't do this and that then later on down the road, they're having a hard time tracking down where their storage is being taken up on the server. And they have a hard time, um, I guess, just managing those users where some have 50 gigs, some have 10, and it, it it becomes hard at that point to backtrack and say, no, all of our users get either one gig or five gigs or 10 gigs, you know, or something like that. So I think setting those versions up by default, these cPanel packages, that's what WHM calls different cPanel versions. Um, I think that becomes really helpful. So um, I'm going to, I guess, next here, go into how you might create a cPanel package and then all of those steps along the way where you can customize. So starting with storage, obviously, but then also jumping into the different cPanel icons. You can customize those, the cPanel features. You can also customize cPanel application, so the Installatron section. You know, maybe your beginner cPanel only offers WordPress, Omeka, and Drupal, but then the advanced cPanel has everything or has access to e-commerce apps or things like that. So, Or with the feature manager, basically, we hear from a lot of schools, we don't want people to have access to email. We exactly. don't want them to see this and that. So you really do get in, have the ability, again, we can take care of a lot of this, but if you want to see where this happens 
and how it happens, this is really useful. Yeah. So yeah, take it away, Lauren. Cool. So uh, like I said, um, let's see, you can see from the list accounts menu here, if I scroll over and depending on your, your window size, you might not need to scroll over, but I can see that quota. I can see that package column. So right off the bat, I know that all of the the users in our demo server called state U are getting a cPanel package called WordPress in the classroom. So you really can name them whatever you want, but I like to start here to know by default, okay, what are people getting? I can then even click on this package. It's going to take me into a new window. Let me magnify my screen a little bit and you can see, okay, what, what are people getting in this quota? Unlimited disk quota. I'm not so sure about that you know, unlimited email addresses, maybe we want to change that. So I'm changing an existing package. Okay. You can see it only allows for max two subdomains. Again, this is a demo server. So, you know, you might have different limits here. Um, we don't allow any add on domains on our demo server. But again, that might change for you all just completely depends. Do we want to give them shell access? Etc. the type of cPanel theme that we want by default in uh, that feature list. We'll come back to that in a second, but that is, um, that's the, the feature list or the cPanel icons that we're offering. So let's start first, we're gonna create a new package. So I'm gonna search the word package up here. I love my search bar here, and I'm gonna add a new package. Okay, so we, we can edit existing packages or add a new one. I'm going to call this, um, let's actually, I want to know what the packages are called so I don't create a new one with the same name. Okay, so we're going to create a new package called advanced. All right, um, I don't really like having a limited disk quota. Um, even if you want to provide a lot of quota for folks, um, it's probably not best practice to have unlimited uh, just because there's really no cap on the accounts. <clears throat> and then that can eat into disk storage in the event that someone installs a WordPress theme that's out of date and it gets spammed with comments or something. You know, you, you want accounts to have caps. Um, so, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm just going to let's, you know, give that one 5000 megabytes. Um, Unlimited monthly bandwidth, you know, I'll just for now, we'll just kind of go through here. Max FTP accounts, they can have, unlim you know, unlimited. That's fine. We don't want them to have email. Um, so that's not going to matter. Let's see. Unlimited subdomains. Sure. I'm going to make unlimited add on domains. So I'm just kind of going through and deciding what this specific cPanel account will be able to do. Let's give them shell access. That's fine. Um, and then we'll change that, that feature list later on. So for now, I'm just creating my package. And then right off the bat, if I go back to list accounts here and search my domain, I can't remember if Jim actually changed it. There we go. Um, I can now modify my account and change the plan. This is one area where I wish cPanel or WHM was consistent and called this package because they use package throughout but then here it's called plan, which is really silly in my opinion. Uh, but I'm going to change that package. You can see they're using it there again. And I'm going to click upgrade or downgrade. You can see the server's like going through all the changes, changing all the settings on the for that specific account. And then that's what you want. The enabling done. Setting the quota. You can see it changed all of the settings. Now if I go back to list accounts, search my domain. Um, and I scroll over here, let's do that. You can see my quota changed and now I've got that new package. So that very clearly allows you to see um, just how you might change that package. And we haven't even gotten into Feature Manager or Installatron yet. Yeah, and I think one of the things just to keep in mind for folks out there, and uh, we'll be responding in the chat as well, like things like if you're not familiar with add-on domains mm -hmm. or subdomains, I mean, these are all options within cPanel. Add-on domains lets people add a domain that they purchase elsewhere, like jimgroom.net, and then wrap it on top of that subdomain. Subdomain is a, another kind of partition of your site, so you can have blog.jimgroom.stateu.org. 
And then there's email. So there's a whole bunch of different options in there. So when you're looking at that um, kind of, what would we call kind of package, keep in mind that some of that stuff when to default or not, that's all basically within cPanel and something that's worth kind of, if you don't know it, reach out to us again, yeah. we can help you with this. So um, don't let that scare you. But at the same time, all of that stuff is manageable, which is nice mm -hmm. to see through that package manager, which is yeah, pretty and, that, and that's a good point too, Jim. You know, if you feel comfortable making these changes on your own, great, but know that you don't have to. You can come to us and say, hey, we're looking to create another package that has X amount of storage and nothing else matter. You know, everything else keep the same how you would normally do it. Uh, based on what you recommend or, or suggest, and then we can go in and help you create it. So we like to give you the keys to the kingdom in case you feel comfortable doing it, but obviously uh, we're here to help. So, um, all right, we've created our package, which is kind of the first step. Now we want to create a new feature manager group. I've used that word a few times. Um, so feature manager here is how you would go about um, editing the different icons in cPanel. So if I pop over to my cPanel here, you can see um, I've got applications. All of these are the different features of cPanel, uh, files, email. So let's say um, in our advanced cPanel package, we want to get rid of email. Um, so I can go through, I can edit an, an existing feature list. You can see there's a WordPress in the classroom feature list that's been associated with the package. But I'm going to create a new one called advanced just to keep things consistent. OK, and now um, I want to select everything, um, you know, by default. OK, so everything's going to come in. But now let's say email. I want to turn off all email stuff. And there's more than just um, than just these icons. We have a document that I will make sure is linked uh, in the chat for how you would go about turning yeah. off the email icons because they do hide a few other settings. Um, if I come over to my cPanel, you know, spam filters, for example, that doesn't have the word email in it. So it's not gonna pick it up. But if I search- Box trapper, like spam, there you have to go back and forth. I don't know why yeah. they don't group them. It would be so much easier. But, but we do have a, a document that has all of the things to search for. <laughs> um, also, you can come to us and say, hey, Lauren, can you take out the email section in my cPanel account? And I'll exactly. say, yeah, sure. And <laughs> we'll do it for you. Um, so, yeah. So that's kind of how you can see I created that feature list. Um, it's now here. I can go in and edit it. So we're just searching feature. And then from that page, we can... Um, edit existing feature lists or um, create new ones. Now, now that we have that feature list, we have to go back and associate it with our package that we created. So I'm going to come back to package, edit a package, because we want to edit the existing advanced package that we just created, right? And if you remember at the bottom, there's that feature list space. And right now it has default. Now we want to set it to advanced because we've created that. And we'll click change. That's good. Um, so now if I pop back into my list accounts and I search my account here, you can see I've got the advanced package there. I'm going to click into my cPanel account and I should I won't see all of the uh, the email stuff gone, but you can see some of them are gone. The ones that say email are gone for the most part. So I think routing has another name and feature list, but you can see it kind of going down. It's probably not a great example because I didn't take out all of the email stuff, but it's, <laughs> trust me. There's so much to take out. I know. But I mean, I think it, it reminds me, and it is a good use case. So for example, if folks out there are like, look, we have certain groups that are just going to want basic, the applications, file manager, and some domain work. They don't want to see anything about email. They don't want to see anything about like more sophisticated, like, you know, analytics or tracking or API yeah. stuff. They want all that gone. You can create a very basic package and that's what most people get. And then the folks who have maybe are doing it as part of a computer science class who, who need more control, who do need email, 
they get that advance. So mm -hmm. in the simple version, you could take out a lot and really make cPanel two or three groups of stuff, applications yeah. you could install, files, and some preferences, just like that. That's a great example. Yeah, so um, we do have- really boiled down cPanel. Yeah, sorry to interrupt, Jim. I was just gonna, no, no, exactly. No. You know, we do have some institutions that say, I want a really stripped down version of cPanel. We don't have a lot of support in house to be able to answer a ton of questions. We just wanna offer WordPress with maybe some file manager access, things like that. So you really can strip it down. So just let us know. Um, you know, there's no right or wrong way. It just depends on what your community wants to offer and support. And again, I think that's why the packages are super cool because you're not limited to just one version. You can say, okay, default, everybody gets this and then faculty get this or our computer science folks get this. Um, the last step, sorry. No, no, go ahead. Okay, the last step, um, so we've gotten, we've done our applications, we've done our settings and our quota, or sorry, we haven't done applications, we've done our cPanel feature manager, the icons, now we want to do the application. So when yeah. I click my apps here, or let's say applications browser, there's a ton of applications that we can offer. A lot of institutions like to get rid of the e-commerce stuff. So I'm going to use that as my example. And the same way that we have to create a new feature manager group, uh, we also have to create a new group in Installatron. And again, we have a guide on this. I'll make sure it's linked. Um, so let me see here. I believe it's down in, it's gonna take me a minute to, to find it. Um, there we go. Let's see, I, oh, it's in groups, of course. So you can see no groups have been created on this server yet. So all of our C panels and the default uh, demo account all have the same applications, but I'm gonna create one. And again, just use my same naming advanced um, and click save. And that's really it right now. Great, so we've got that group. And now if I go into access control, whoop, okay. You can see I have all of those applications there that I can check in and out of, but now I have my group thing here at the top. So I can search, I could go to advanced, and now I can go in, let's say I'll scroll down to the e-commerce apps. Perfect, so I'm under my e-commerce section, and I'm just gonna start unchecking. And this is really uh, kind of monotonous, so if you come to us with a list of applications that you do or don't want to offer, we can go in and do this for you. I think even Chris has a script, Chris and our infrastructure team has a script that he can run to kind of, you know, quickly say, uncheck all of these boxes here and, um, you know, things like that. So I'm not gonna waste your time and go through and uncheck all of those, but, um, that's kind of how you would do it. Then we would scroll down and click save all. And it is a nice look too at Installatron. So the one click installer that we use at Reclaim Hosting is basically the other services provide something like Scriptaculous or the old gold one, which what, what was it called again? Fantastico, mm -hmm. right? These are just basic, you know, script installers that allow you to install WordPress with one click or Omeka. And we use Installatron and we have custom applications for installing them. And so this is where you could go in and control the settings of Installatron pretty yeah. seamlessly. And as Lauren said, even create a kind of series of groups where some users get access to certain apps where other users don't have access. And so that's kind of nice. Yeah, and in our last few minutes here, I can kind of explain a few other things in uh, Installatron. There's a template section. We'll get into that more later today about how you can template out your own applications. Uh, so, you know, templated versions of WordPress, for example. I can also see at a bird's eye view the applications that have been installed on the server itself which is kind of cool. So I can see they're kind of pulled out of their cPanel accounts and into this main list because this is a demo server. You know, I'm not sure if there's gonna be much to share here, but you can see a Moodle account, a lot of WordPress, but it's kind of cool because I could come up and search Omeka, for example, and see, okay, we're getting how many support tickets on Omeka? Does that 
you know, does that balance out with the number of applications that we're getting, for example? Um, let me search Moodle and see what's popping up here. Okay, so maybe for whatever reason, I thought that it was more helpful than that. Oh, maybe it's because I have typos here. But anyway, um, yeah, okay, maybe it's not. Oh, it just takes a minute yeah. to load. That's my issue. WordPress is my second favorite application after WordPress. <laughs> That's true, yes. Um, but it's just a kind of a, a cool space to see what's happening, the work happening on the server. I also like, um, oh, and I guess that kind of pulls us at time here. So <laughs> we'll get into some other, I can talk about WHM all day long, obviously. There's a lot here uh, to, to discover and talk about. We'll share some more documentation and just resources. Uh, for using WHM, but honestly, best practice and just as you're navigating domains is just sort of reach out to us, say, hey, is this possible? Uh, and we can say, yeah, probably in WHM or no, but here's an alternative. I think in this little bus where I'm driving, it's wrong. I think you should be driving the bus. <laughs> or maybe it's a European bus where I am. <laughs> exactly. It's a British bus. Yeah. All right, folks. Thank you so much uh, for listening in on our WHM overview. We're going to cover WHMCS here shortly. Uh, and then later this afternoon, we're going to get into some really important, exciting support, you know, applying all of these, these things that we're learning uh, for real life support scenarios. So thanks for tuning in. Yeah.